This etude in C-sharp minor, opus 2, number 1, is one of Scriabin's relatively well-known pieces. It was written by a 16-year-old Scriabin in 1887, and it became a success for the young composer because of its soulful melodic qualities. It's a very short piece, only two pages long. And etude means practicing piece, basically. Um, and here it's some exercise in uh, voicing the melody through big chords. But it's still much more interesting musically than technically. It's fascinating because Scrabin is starting to find his own voice in these early compositions. But the style is still highly romantic. It could almost be written by Rachmaninoff, this lovely melody in the beginning. Let's look at the phrase structure here in the beginning, because it's a classic three strikes and we're off build up. If I just play the melody and the bass, it's the first time, now the second time. It's the same motive, but it's a fourth higher, so raising the stakes. Now the third time, we're gonna take off. It's a longer phrase and we come back down in the end of it. Now for the texture to this melody, it's repeated chords pulsating through the whole piece, like the left hand here. So with the melody. feature you get sometimes in romantic music when it's filled with intense emotions. You have it for example in uh, Chopin, in a slow piece, his prelude in E minor. The left hand is pulsating. And you also have it in Rachmaninoff, for example, in his prelude in B minor, The Return. Uh, it reaches a climax here. So it keeps pulsating like this. And you also have it, of course, in other Scriabin pieces. For example, Etude in D sharp minor, opus 8, number 12, and in the bigger works as well, is Fantasy in B minor, or uh, Fourth Sonata in the end when it's really intense. You just get to pump those chords on the piano. Okay, and returning to the Etude, the harmonies here are scraping with dissonances, adding the pain in the music. starts just as another round of a uh, set of three strikes. The harmonies are even more pressing going forward. Of course, the key signature is going to change from C sharp minor to E flat minor 
after 12 bars. I mean, why not? And here starts the middle section. Now the aim of the melody isn't as strong upward as it was before. Now it's more staying in one place. It's very soft. And then the harmony changes here and it's louder. starts to turn back around uh, when we get to this. This is what it says. And here. And here we're already back to the return of the first melody. And this, when it turns around, it's so great. This F turns to an E, and that means we're going back to C sharp minor. And I think you just have to do a crescendo in this transition because uh, it feels so nice. strike. Uh, Scriabin develops the left hand to play 16th notes, so adding even more energy and tension in the dissonances. We come down and then there's an echo of the middle section again. Now it's closer to the home key of C-sharp minor. And now we get this. It's such a beautiful sound. So C-sharp minor and the left hand plays this note in the bass. And starts a descent. And you should take time when you play this and really savor this beautiful sound. just get one final turn of the melody. But right before that, when you get this, so this chord, this is called a German sixth chord. It's quite advanced harmony stuff, but usually it's written like this. And then the progression. It's very tense progression. Because these notes are going here. Going to Cesar minor. But Scriabin likes to notate it kind of in an inverted way. So instead of this, he writes. And so it's more open and unclear. It's something else, this, like a new world opening up a bit. So just. same note, this F double sharp. And for the final cadence chord, so before the home chord of C sharp minor, we get the F sharp minor. So that's called a plagal cadence. It's kind of a low key ending. add this deep C sharp. I mean, why not uh, make it even more rounded? You know that phrase, hopeless romantic? That's so much this piece. Like the pains of lost love hurt so much that life's not worth living anymore. 
but then without strong emotions life would be so bleak so let's just immerse ourselves in this stew of emotion and enjoy it while it lasts this is sonata secrets with henry tilham subscribe hit like and let me know what you think about the piece in the comment section below now please enjoy when i play through the piece If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and support my work on Patreon at patreon.com slash sonatasecrets and stay tuned for a new video every week.